Brethren, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you that are attending this meeting, those that will be watching later. May the Lord be with you and bless you and your family, bless your marriage. We are here today to continue the series, uh, Seven Keys to a Happy Marriage. We have been going through this series. This is the sixth one, and after this we will have just one more. And the first one was about forgiveness, then we talked about self-sacrifice, humility, assertive communication, and the other one was make time for your spouse, and today we are going to talk about the talk, protect your marriage. And then we will be talking next month about uh, placing God in the center of our marriage. So I hope you may enjoy this meeting here today, that you may enjoy the whole seminar, you can go and look to the uh, talks we had before, and you can also watch next month the next talk. But today, we are going to be talking about this important talk, protect your marriage. Uh, that's a, a more polite way of saying this topic, but what we are going to say here in reality is that we should not allow anyone or anything uh, intrude into our marriage. Uh, the marriage is something sacred. Marriage is something really special. When we look throughout the Bible, we can see that God made marriage something really, really special. Uh, in the very beginning, there in the Garden of Eden, God performed the first wedding when he joined Adam and Eve. And then we see that in the New Testament, in the beginning of the New Testament, uh, we see the Lord putting lots of value in, in marriage. In the beginning, I mean, of the ministry of Jesus, he also performed his first miracle uh, in a wedding celebration. And when we go to Revelation, the last chapter of the Bible, when God's talking about the end of the history of this world, we see it finishing also with something representing marriage. We see the bridegroom coming to join his bride. Uh, that's uh, Christ joining the church, taking the church with him back home. So that's what marriage, uh, how marriage is presented in the Bible. In the very beginning, in the Garden of Eden, then in the middle there, in the New Testament, in the beginning of the ministry of Christ, uh, God makes this special miracle in that wedding party uh, and to show the importance he gives to marriage. Then he finishes the Bible with revelation showing the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, coming to take his bride home. So that's why we are here talking about marriage for these last few months and we will continue this month and we will continue today talking about it and as we mentioned already the talk for today is protect your marriage and we will finish next month talking about God in the center of your, our, our marriage so uh, let's keep it always in mind this thought that God talks about the importance of marriage. He shows the importance of marriage in the beginning of the Bible, in the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, in the closing of the Bible, the closing of the history of this world, uh, presenting Jesus Christ coming for his bride, the church. And uh, when we are talk, we talk here today about protecting our marriage, uh, we will talk about the importance of uh, encircling or making a fence around our marriage, around our family, and uh, I hope it may be a blessing for you, for your marriage, and for uh, you to share with others as well. And I thank you all for coming, joining us here. Uh, uh, Obed Licona is here with us. Sister Lena is also watch, watching. Uh, Stephen uh, Lacatus, thank you all for joining us here, and those that will be uh, is still joining us. I'll be praying for all of you, all the names that are showing up here. I'll continue praying for you, for your family, for your marriage, for those that plan to get married and are already here with us, joining us to learn something about marriage, for us to learn together. So uh, we are going to be talking a little bit of what I'll be talking here. It's about my own experience, of course, in marriage. Uh, and uh, may, most of it will be uh, advice, counsels coming from the Word of God. So thank you, Brother Ivan Petrov, for joining us as well. And uh, oh, the Spirit of Prophecy, there in the book, Ministry of Healing, page five, uh, 359, it tells us that however careful uh, we are and wisely we choose our, the companion for our life, uh, we can, we can be really careful 
with our marriage, with our choice for marriage, and uh, we may plan our marriage, our wedding very well, but it says there, however carefully and wisely marriage may have been entered into, the real union of the two in wedlock is the work after, uh, of the after years. So what the Spirit of Prophecy is saying here to us in this text is that uh, we, we may choose very well the person we are going to get married. We, we can get married in the church, we, have, we are really careful about with whom we are going to get married, but it says here, well, the, the real union among the two people will be a work of the years that will come after uh, the ceremony of the wedding. So that's why sometimes we see uh, some people, they seem to have been very careful uh, in choosing the companion for the rest of their lives. They uh, get married in the church, they try to do their best so when they are dating to marry the, uh, the right person. And then later we see them facing difficulties and some of them unfortunately may even separate themselves from each other. It happens because, as the spirit process here, uh, it, the, the preparation for the wedding before, it's important to be careful who you choose to marry, but it's also very important the work you put into your marriage after, in the years that come after the ceremony. Many married couples, they experience that their relationship, their relationship uh, uh, changes over time. And uh, uh, although, Although both spouses realize how much they suffer from the chance that, that their marriage suffered, they have no idea uh, how to deal with the emptiness that has crept into their marriage. And they suffer because they don't know how to deal with the situation. They don't understand how it happened that things changed. And things change because intruders come into the marriage and uh, cause separation. Be, uh, between the wife and the husband, between us and the person we love. Thank you, Brother Jerson, for joining us here, Sister Eva as well. Thank you uh, for coming and participate with us of this meeting. We are talking here today about protecting our marriage. Protect your marriage is the topic for today. So uh, this chance in marriage happen, and sometimes the couple gets a little bit lost they don't know what to do, they don't understand what is happening in their marriage. Uh, so they see chance happened and they don't understand why. We talked here some time ago, not long ago, about the importance this, that the Word of God puts in uh, keeping our marriage as it was uh, in the time we were dating. Uh, there is a text there also in Ministry of Healing that I think, if I'm not mistaken, is repeated also in the Adventist home that tells us to continue the early attentions. In every way, we should continue encouraging each other to fight the battles of life. And uh, then there is a phrase there in the middle of that text that's very important for us to understand. It says, study to advance the happiness of each other. So in other words, continue putting effort in study and put more effort after you get married to make the other person happy. And uh, then it continues saying, let there be mutual love, mutual forbearance. Uh, then marriage instead of being the end of love will be as it was the very beginning of love. So what the Spirit is telling us there is that uh, once we get married, we should be happier than in the time we were dating. So marriage is a blessing, is something that makes us even happier than we were before getting married. Uh, so the warmth of friendship, the love that binds the hearts, uh, is uh, the spirit process. It's a foretaste of the joys of heaven. So that's what God wants for you in your marriage, to be so happy that uh, your married, married life is a foretaste of the joys of heaven. But uh, as we mentioned here, some couples, they seem to be very happy uh, while they are dating, the beginning of their marriage, you know, in the first years of their marriage, they are very happy. And uh, during these first years of their relationship, they spend many evenings just talking to each, to each other. They enjoy the time they spend together. They want to share joys, hurts, and they, they share their hearts with each other. And there, there is a closeness between the two 
that uh, often make them just to get to know more uh, about each other and to talk more. So they are really happy, they're enjoying their relationship in these first years of marriage during the time they are dating and first years of marriage. But, and both of them, they are sure in the beginning there that they found the soulmate that they have been longing for, the person they want to live the rest of their lives. But as the relationship progresses, the constraints of life, uh, the constraints of every day seem to take, a, take control of their marriage and things start changing. These uh, constraints of uh, life we are talking here, things that change, that things that are new in the marriage, like children, we, we get children, things change. When you have children, things will be different. Sometimes your career, you are forced to change work, or you have to go study more, and this chance sometimes start taking control of your life, uh, your married life, and uh, f sometimes friends also, uh, relatives, they may bring change to your life, and even church. Some offices you get in the church, you may get more involved in the church, and all these things we are talking here, children, career, friends, relatives, church, they are all very good in themselves but uh, we cannot allow them to become a burden to our marriage because uh, suddenly the couple has to realize that their relationship revolves more around these other things than uh, about themselves, so about each other. And uh, that it cannot happen. These intruders, <laughs> sometimes they come, they impose themselves, they become intruders, when, even if they are good things, as we have been talking about good things here, children, relatives, church, career, friends, but they can become intruders if we let them to take over the importance of our spouse, of the person we love. Uh, then uh, if we allow these things to become more important than our marriage, then the closeness between the two uh, uh, seems to disappear. And uh, although both spouses realize how much they suffer in consequence of this. As I mentioned in the beginning, they just know how to deal with it. They feel the emptiness that have crept into their marriage and they are suffering the consequence and they don't know what to do with it. And Brad, in this situation I just mentioned, I just described here, it's very common. It happens more often than we would like to see them happen. And uh, I want to tell you, if you have some difficulties in your marriage, because some things have changed in your marriage. It cannot be solved by putting the blame on the other spouse. Quite often, both partners have the feeling that they are the only one that are investing in their marriage life. While the other just doesn't care, the other has no interest in solving the problems, but it's not necessarily the case most of the times. Even if both spouses try to make their marriage work, they may feel an increasing distance between each other. And uh, then we are left asking, how did it happen? What happened? We were so happy before, we found in, in, in each other all that we thought we needed, and what happened for our marriage life to judge so dramatically? And the answer is simpler than we may want to realize. Chance come because we let outside intrude into our marriage. Not on purpose, of course. It uh, just happens because we do not protect our marriage actively. So that's why today we are talking here about this talk, protect your marriage. We may believe that as long as we don't break out of our marriage, nothing bad may enter into it, everything is going to be fine. If I stay in my marriage life, I don't divorce, that's good enough and I can bury it, but that's not the case. God doesn't want you to just bury your marriage. And he, he wants you to be happy in your marriage because you are only going to make the other person happy if you are happy as well. Just as bearing the, suffering the marriage, that's not what God wants for us as couples. He wants us to be happy and to make each other happy and we can do it and one of the things, one of the keys for it to happen is to not allow anyone to intrude in your marriage life. Uh, because God wants your marriage to be a blessing 
to be a, a light. He wants you, you as a couple to be shining, that others may see Jesus in you and see that in Jesus a couple can be happy. There are many things in the world that can compete for our love. And sometimes these forces are so strong that they get between us and the person that we love. Our life uh, and our relationship, our friendship in marriage uh, can be diminished because these things have intruded into our lives. I'll give you here a few examples of such intruders that are uh, the damaging many marriages and can be a problem for our marriage if we do not watch, if we do not protect our marriage from these intruders. One of them that can uh, become a problem, work. If you work too much, you put work in the first place, you put work ahead of your spouse, it can become a problem. Work is very good. Children, as we mentioned, are very good. Outside hobbies and interests are important that you have your own hobbies, your own interests. Sports, uh, in-laws, parents can become intruders if you allow them to become. They are all, as I said here, good things. These ones I have been mentioned. Friends, church, financial involvements. We need to be financially involved with some things. Uh, there are other things that are not so good. Some of these things I mentioned, they are good, they are very good, but if they are put ahead of your spouse, they become a problem. Other examples of intruders, television, internet, computer games. I have been talking here about the importance of you not spending time that you should be with your spouse uh, in the internet, in Facebook, WhatsApp, whatever it be. I even mentioned some time ago, if uh, your spouse go to bed and you stay in the computer, stay in your cell phone, uh, just looking at WhatsApp, uh, chatting their WhatsApp, looking at Facebook, it's something is wrong right there. Go and lay together, go to sleep together. Uh, there are other things that can become intruders as well. Uh, I think I already mentioned computer games. If they start taking too much time of your marriage, sacrifice your time with your spouse. Shopping, even shopping, for some become an addiction and become an intruder in the marriage. Uh, there are other things like illness, things you cannot avoid. You can get sick, so you have to watch, especially if one of you are sick, not to allow it to become an intruder that will cause difficulties in your marriage. Addictions are very dangerous. There are different kinds of addictions. I'm not going to mention them here, but there are so many addictions that become intruders in the marriage. And uh, uh, some of the, the things I mentioned here, I want to emphasize one again. They are good, but you have to know how to deal with them. Most of these things I mentioned here, actually, they are not bad in themselves, but they can be destructive for a relationship when they, be, they come between the couple, between the couple's love, the pressures, the temptations and even genuinely good opportunities come from outside and they are limitless. They appear in different forms, in all different uh, kind of temptations and they don't wait for an invitation to intrude into your marriage. They show up by themselves. And I want to talk a little bit here, Bradley, uh, before going towards the end of our meeting, I want to talk a little bit about uh, relatives and in-laws and parents that sometimes may become intruders. I know it's a little bit uh, strange even to say that because we love our families, we love our parents, our parents-in-laws, uh, we love our relatives, but the spiritual process, there is a, uh, one text also of the inspiration that says it's, it, it's something really special there. It says it's not good for the couples when they get married to be living all too close to, to, to relatives. Uh, to, to parents and, you know, families growing too much, too close from each other. And uh, why? Be then it's pure process that when the couple has a problem, it becomes the problem of everybody. Everybody wants to give an opinion, or everybody wants to find a solution, and sometimes it becomes a problem. Then relatives become intruders. So even your mother, your father, they should not intrude and you should not give them opportunity to intrude. You have a problem, some difficulties in your marriage life, uh, 
solve it among yourselves. Pray, ask God to give you wisdom, patience, love for each other, and try to solve it among yourselves. If you go and tell your father or your mother about it, more likely they'll take your side. They'll hear the story only from you, they love you so much, and it's very easy for them to get resentful towards your spouse. And it becomes a problem in the family. It will not solve your marital problem, your marital difficulties, and it's going to create another difficulty now among your parents and your spouse. So that's why this spirit process, if possible, not to live too close together in such a way that families, uh, parents, relatives can be intruding in your relationship. Uh, if you want to prevent it from happening, you must uh, become active and protect your marriage. We have to recognize the dangers of uh, and put a well-balanced boundary uh, sur surrounding our marriage before these things come between us and our spouse. We need to learn sometimes to say no to some people, to some circumstances of life before they become so strong that we cannot uh, that defend ourselves from them, we cannot separate ourselves from them anymore. So some things uh, now we must talk a little bit about, uh, I want to talk a little bit about work. Sometimes when work becoming too demanding, your boss demanding too much, and you start sacrificing your marriage, your spouse because of your work, you have to learn to say no sometimes uh, before it goes so far that uh, the priorities of your life change. And it's important that you understand that the only human being that have top priority in your situations, in your life, that's your spouse. And the later we start uh, to, to, that, to do that, to put our spouse as the first priority, as far as we talk as human beings, the more difficult it will be for us to change. But I want to tell you, it's never too late to start. Put your spouse as a priority in your life and not allowing anyone or anything to come between you and the person you love. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not uh, just a recommendation. As I said at the, in the beginning, uh, some of it I'm talking here, it's my own experience, marriage experience. But uh, when we talk about protecting our marriage, not allowing anything to separate ourselves from our spouse, even uh, we are not talking here about divorcing, it's, uh, it's separating us emotionally, uh, becoming intruders between us and our love. Uh, it's not just an advice I give out of my experience, it's something that the Lord tells us in the Bible, that nothing should separate the couple, not even momentarily. As I said, we are not talking here about divorce, but the Bible there in Matthew chapter 19, verse 6, it goes very far talking about when we think about it, when the Lord says that when we get married, the Lord says there, they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what has God has joined together, let no man separate. No man, no anything, no anyone should intrude in your marriage to separate us. Why not? Because if they separate us, even if we think, no, that's just for a time, there's a great chance it's going to lead us to have more difficulties that can even cause a separation in the marriage, a final separation, divorce. And that's why God tells us it do not allow anything come between and your spouse. I want to quote to you here a text from the inspiration. Once again, it comes from the book, Ministry of Healings, when it says that uh, around every family, there is a sacred circle that should be kept unbroken. So there is a circle in our marriage that should be kept unbroken. Within this circle, says the inspiration, no other person has a right to come. No one, not even our parents, our relatives, our friends, they have no right to come inside this circle. Let not the husband or the wife permit another to share the confidences that belong solely to themselves, solely to themselves. So let no one come into your marriage. I have seen couples that, uh, unfortunately, they start destroying their marriage in the very beginning of marriage. They start in telling people some things that went wrong in their first nights when they were in their honeymoon and it caused some misery in their marriage. And I saw some of, some couples, unfortunately, 
getting through trouble, great trouble in their marriage because they start talking to others about their int intimacy, about some difficulties they were facing. They were still learning together things in their married life and they start telling others uh, part, uh, about these details and unfortunately their marriage uh, got in trouble. Some of them finished in divorce. So that's why this verse is saying here, it's a sacred circle around your marriage that no one has the right to come. And you should not give anyone the right to come to this circle. It's something private, it's something sacred between you and your spouse. So, summarizing, brethren, what we have been talking here is that we must protect our marriage so that the outside world cannot separate it, cannot interfere, cannot intrude in our marriage. We must guard the, uh, uh, the core of our marriage, the love between husband and wife. And this doesn't come for free. It will cost us a lot when we decide to protect our marriage. But our marriage is only as strong as we invest, uh, what we invest into it. If we do not put uh, a very high value on what will make our marriage grow, then other influence will take over. Intruders will come in. But if we invest time, effort, and sacrifice in protecting our marriage, from such influence that come from outside, then God's grace, by God's grace, we will have a happy marriage. And I wish that the Lord may bless you, bless your spouse, bless uh, you as a couple, that you may understand the importance of keeping all these intruders out and do not allow anyone or anything to interfere in your marriage. And I pray that the light of God that comes from the throne of God may shine upon you, you as a couple and that you, by God's grace, may have the power, the strength to protect your marriage and by His grace you may have a happy marriage. May God bless you and your spouse and your children if you have them. And once again, brethren, I want to thank you all for being here with, with, uh, with us. Sister Mariana joined us as well. Uh, Mark Okay, Zuriel Hans, thank you for joining us. Uh, Glenda House and many others here. Some of the names I don't know how to pronounce them properly, but I will be praying for all of you, Brandon. Thank you very much for joining us here. And before we finish the meeting this evening, uh, this evening for me, actually today I'm in Brazil. It's around uh, uh, 9:30 p.m. here. And uh, before finishing the meeting with you here, I want to pray for you and for your spouse and for your family. So I'm going to bow my heads and talk to the Lord. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for blessing us, for bringing us together here. Thank you Lord for the instructions of thy word, helping us to find the keys for a happy marriage. I ask you to bless every family represented here, those that are watching, those that will be watching later. May you be with them that they may have a happy marriage. May the light of thy throne shine in our lives, shine in our marriage, that we may protect it with thy power, by thy grace. And Father, save us as a couple for thy kingdom and help, help us to make each other happy here in this world. We ask these blessings, we put ourselves and our children in thy hands, and we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you again, brethren. May the Lord be with you and bless your marriage.